Nice night. Painted the silver parts with Krylon foil metallic silver. Now I looked at the chrome and I looked at the other colors that they had and I thought, well for one thing they look kind of fake. And the other I thought they wouldn't hold up well. So I did a test and I painted this little piece here. This is the cover for the level and it was originally nickel plated. The nickel had long since come loose and fallen off. And I thought, well, if I can still see the letters and numbers on it after I'm done, I'm going to consider it a good job. Dried out just about right. You can still see the letters and numbers quite clearly. So then I painted the outside of the chuck and actually makes it so that you can read the Miller's Falls Company. Right on there very easily. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I went ahead and painted everything with it. Now, is it going to last? Probably not. Uh, this kind of a tool is going to be used and abused because it is a user tool. Is it mu museum quality? Absolutely not. Not even close. But does it look good? Yeah, actually it does. I made some choices and said I'm going to go, the, go with this stuff. And if it wears off, okay, it wears off. pretty good. It's going to keep it from rusting. This is the whole purpose of the paint. Because after I strip the, the rust off of these things, they're what's called chemically clean. Chemically clean means that uh, they suck up oxygen really quickly. And having them turn into rust balls just didn't sound like a good plan. This is the fixed race. And it goes right in there. I can't do this easily where the camera can see it, so pardon me for a minute while I get it started. real good chance that I might have to do something that's going to damage the paint on it. And since this is spray paint, I'm not really sure how I'm going to go about touching it up. A couple ways it's possible to do it. And I'm going to see which way works best. But hopefully, and it actually seems like I'm doing it, there down, seated all the way. Doesn't that silver look nice against the black? I think it's cool. Makes it seem worth it to buy the nickel plating system. Just so that when I rebuild these tools, 
I can make them look like this in a more permanent way. Now, admittedly, this is a few years old and the nickel plating came off. But I think if I can get anything to last 100 years, it'll never bother me in my lifetime. Now the plan that I worked out for putting the bearings in, that's a packet of 100 ball bearings that I got from Amazon. We'll move this fixture over out of the way. Yeah, classy painting fixture, right? But it worked, I needed to get this thing so that it was held. And I stuck it on the fixture like that. I was able to hang it on there and then flip it over Paint it, worked pretty good. Piece of scrap and a screw hook. squirting off everywhere. For the assembly process, I worked out that if I put the shaft in, the shaft has got the bearing race mounted on it. Now, it's a hardened steel bearing race that's pressed onto there, and I looked at it and thought it's not worth the trouble to go through and try and peel it off of there. So I'm going to pick up the ball bearings and once again this little Zacto knife blade is magnetized. Which works out just about perfect. Now I do have to be careful that I don't pick up any steel particles but this cloth that I'm using to work off of I use it as a base for painting and all kinds of things, but I don't file on it. So I should be able to maintain not having any bearing destroying particles on it. I may drop one of these ball bearings off in some place that I can't find it. It's okay. I've guesstimated this at about 36 bearings all together. And I have more than 100, so... I can drop quite a few. Not that I plan on it, or want to. turns out that way, it will not be a disaster. That ball bearing is good. Have the race completely filled. Let's see if I can count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yep, thirty six of them. Now, the trick's going to be to get this bearing in there and this race in there and hold this together while I get the gear in there. So I'm 
thinking the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to raise this up. Slide the cone into the gear. Now that I've got the cone in there, I'm going to flip it over. Then I'm going to raise up the cone. First, I think I'm going to get a vise. Clamps and work holding devices are awesome. And I can never have too many of them in my estimation. What this vice lets me do, lets me tip this off to the side and then clamp. Clamp this part. Oh, this is the shaky part. Can I get this to stay? Seems to be. Now, let's see, can I raise this up? If I do that, if I pick that up, all those ball bearings are going to fall out. That would be a bad idea. Eighteen ball bearings. ball bearings. Now, can I hold the ball bearings in there? 